Hi Bio4 and welcome to chapter 24, the digestive system. And this is the last chapter, you guys. We are getting down there. So to start out the digestive system, you have to think of it as a, a tube that's almost external to the body because it opens up in two separate ends and goes from the mouth to the anus and it's sort of one big tube, almost external, right? That has its own entryway and its own exit called the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, and um, it has a series of accessory organs that we're going to be looking at. So what are the functions of this system? Well, ingestion, you can have to, you start out by the mouth, you're ingesting food, you're digesting food, it needs to be broken down and then absorbed. Uh, leftovers need to be compacted and eliminated. So this system has a lot of work to do. Um, we've been looking at pictures like this when it comes to respiratory and going down the trachea. Now we're coming in the mouth, coming down the esophagus, coming into the stomach, leaving the stomach into the duodenum, and then into the jejunum, and ileum, and cecum and large intestine, sending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and then sigmoidal, this last little piece, rectum and anus. But we're going to look at those in a whole lot more detail. This is definitely just an overview, but a lot going on here. Also, we have the liver, and um, let's get to that in a little bit. Okay, so histologically, the wall of this digestive tract all the way from the esophagus to the other end has the same basic arrangement of tissues. And um, what does that look like? So if we could do a cross section, it would be like in the diagram here, and you would have four layers, or we call them tunics. Uh, if you go from the lumen, from the innermost to the outermost, you would have first a mucosal layer so the mucosa then is going to be full of goblet cells right and it's going to be putting that mucus in there so that um, chyme can move down through the lumen easily without getting stuck so we have a mucosa in the purple is a sub mucosa we'll talk about what that does and then a whole musculature layer so it's the muscularis and we have lots of muscle there to be able to move things along. And then an outer shiny layer of connective tissue here that's called the serosa. So mucosa, submucosa, muscul muscularis, and serosa is what's going to line pretty much the whole way. Um, I do want to show you in this view, you have again the serosa, the muscularis. Look, and you see it in longitudinal and in cross-section because you have muscles that go in both directions. So this is nice to look at it in, in this way. Submucosa that has lots of the arteries and veins in there, and then the, the muc mucosal layer. But notice also that in that mucosal layer you have um, this folding here, extensive folding. And this folding here are called villi because you want to increase the surface area for absorption. So each one of these little guys is a villus. Many of them are villi. It looks like a shag rug. That's what it looks like. And then on top of that is this whole big loop. Do you notice? So I was showing you the little tiny loops here, but then there's this other bending here of the inside of the digestive system, and that is called a plica. Plica. So this excessive, this fold here um, is also an increase in surface area, and so are the villi that, that follow the plica. Okay, lots of surface area for this. So one by one, the mucosa, mucosal membrane, it's simple columnar epithelium, this is everywhere except for the mouth, right? The mouth is going to, you don't want it to be simple columnar. You don't want it to be simple because you're putting hot, pokey things in your mouth. You need that to be many layers. So except for the mouth, 
um, the pharynx also you want it to be many layers there's lots of stuff that's rubbing down there so this area mouth pharynx and esophagus too are going to be stratified squamous because they're going to take a lot of abrasion okay the function then is going to absorb nutrients it needs to secrete a lot of mucus to do so it has a lot of capillaries because you want to be able to absorb the broken down um, food that you're ingesting remember that if it's pleated it's called plica it also is going to contain an immune system there it's got lymphoid tissue which is going to protect you against all that bacteria that you're ingesting and you want to be able to destroy those so it has something called malt which is the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue so what this is doing then is putting this system on alert if there is too many of these microorganisms that could be could cause some sort of disease okay that's all lymphoid tissue let's go down now into the submucosa this region has larger blood vessels more lymphatic vessels lots of exocrine glands that are going to secrete buffers and enzymes a buffer is a substance that is going to be able to neutralize pH and make it more close to seven and not allow things to be extremely acidic or extremely basic. So that's a buffer. So these exocrine glands here in the submucosa are going to secrete some of these buffers, they're going to secrete enzymes, and you're going to start the process of digestion. Also, it contains nerves. So this is very interesting to me because you have these sensory neurons and these parasympathetic ganglia and tell me that you haven't felt this you get nervous and you feel it in your digestive system you feel it in your stomach like a pit right and so yeah that's real it, you didn't make it up there are these sensory neurons in um let me show you the picture i think i can show you um so in the submucosa here in yellow other than the vein and the artery that are in blue and in red you have these um, um, plexus so these are all neurons okay <clears throat> i had that slide right there okay move on to the muscularis externa and this is concentric layers of smooth muscle and so there's an inner circular layer and then an outer longitudinal layer if I go back to that slide again again you had longitudinal and circular so when you cut circular in the cross section they look like little circles right and this is longitudinal so this arrangement is going to allow for peristalsis so that it's going to be able to contract and push the fish taco down, uh, down your digestive system as, as the longitudinal contract and also the circular layer contracts, pushing things down the system. And this is all innervated primarily by parasympathetic system which is rest and digest right digest part the outermost layer is the serosa it's also called the visceral peritoneum and again not present in the mouth pharynx or esophagus but it's found in the outer layer of the stomach and the small and large intestine it's the very shiny layer that you would see surrounding these organs in sort of um, close them in here i tried to get a picture from your mcgraw hill and you can see it's sort of this shiny layer on the outside is the serosa peristalsis is the movement and the mixing of those digestive materials so you need the coordinated motion of both the circular and the longitudinal muscles in order for food to move down the elementary canal 
this is a diagram of this. So if you had, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna call it a bolus. You've eaten something here, and behind it you have circular muscles that are contracting, and that's going to push it in this direction. And also the contraction of the longitudinal is going to move back. And so it's the joint movement of these muscles moving back and these sort of tightening behind what you just ate that is going to push the food down the elementary canal. There's also mixing of food. It doesn't just move along without mixing as it goes. So when circular muscles in two different areas contract, it can push some of that food together. And I'm gonna show you that in a picture. So if you had a larger piece like this and you had contracting and contracting here, and then contracting in between this piece here, maybe I can draw that. You know, what used to be sort of part one and part two and part one and part two um, get squeezed in between and then this one's going to mix with this one and maybe this one's going to mix with the next one. So you really have quite a bit of mixing of that food as it moves along. Um, peristalsis, I'm saying, is very amazing because there's actually not a neuron coming from the brain that's telling you this, right? These cells have their own innervation, kind of like the heart did with pacemaker cells, with these pacemaker cells in the digestive system. So the signal to contract can either come from just a cell being close to another one, being adjacent to another one that has that motor innervation, or a pace setter uh, cell, which is um, kind of like in the heart, and it goes, undergoes the spontaneous depolarization. It's like a pacemaker cell, the same. Or it could respond to chemicals, hormones, low oxygen, high carbon dioxide, any irritation of the bowels, any of those could create peristalsis. But it's not something that is coming from the cortex of the brain. So we're gonna stop there and then move on starting from mouth to esophagus to stomach and we'll move down the tract. Um, for now, we'll stop this. Thank you for listening.